Next is radiance authentication suppression, although we're not going to really drill into this too much, but the whole idea is it will try to suppress the repeated reporting successful authentication, so kind of clean up your reporting a little bit. Next we have the collection filter, and this is to give you ability to suppress certain syslog messages or log messages, and this includes the messages that you see as part of the authentication log right here. So if there's certain messages where there is fail or pass, actually let's go ahead and take a look at the configuration, and that's under administration, logging, and right there, collection filters, and you can add as many filters as you like. And you need to select attributes. So for example, there's a NAS IP address and that's your where there's switch or WASLAN controller. And let's say we do not want to see any log messages from a NAS that might have an IP 162.16.02. And for filter type, you can filter everything or just filter the pass or fail authentication or disable suppression altogether. Okay, so let's say that we want to filter everything from this device IP address or NAS IP address, then we'll click submit. So at this point, we would no longer receive any locking at all from this particular access device. Okay, the next is to support the secure syslogs, and this is based on the TLS. So just right on top of the collection filter, there's a remote locking target. And if you want ICE to send syslog messages to a remote syslog server, this is where you'll come in and add the syslog server information. So as you can see here on the target type, we can do UDP-based, CCP-based, and now on top of that, we also have a secure syslog. And as soon as you choose that option, you also have to specify the trusted root CA, a third-party root CA. So before you can come and do this, you might need to import the trusted root CA certificate. And you also have the option to ignore the certificate validation altogether. Okay, and then we have a support for Windows 2012 Active Directory, which uh, some of you guys might be looking forward to if you're running 2012 ADs in your environment. Next, we have a global search, which is kind of a handy function. And this is, this is going to allow you to quickly find and filter endpoints or users in the network. So since we have some traffic going through our box already, let's go and do some search. And this is the box up here. So let's say we have a Cisco phone. So you can search for a Cisco phone, enter. And now it's asking you if you want to look for an endpoint profile and specific or something that's under the identity groups. So let's say we want to look for a 7960, which is the phone that we have connected to the switch. And you can see here, it tells you the MAC address, IP address, the state of the device, which is currently using wire permit all. And if you click on this little arrow, it actually present you with the session trace, which is the next feature that we will go through in a little bit. And this is to help you as far as like troubleshooting. And then it also tells you the authenticated authorized information. You can also look at the endpoint details if you want. So these are the device information that ICE has gathered so far. So you see if the case succeeded. Username, since it's MAC address, we know it came in through MAP. It's a internal endpoint, it's Cisco IP phone. You can just go down the list and see. And this is very similar to the authentication detail page on the authentication log or live authentication. See, this is for accounting. And this is the information that's collected as part of a profiling. So you can pretty much see a lot of information here. So let's do another search. We have two of our Windows 7 test machines. So you can just type in Windows 7 and that match the profile device. And hopefully we see two of those, as you can see, one is connected, one is disconnected. Same thing, you can go into endpoints details and all that if you like, all right? So that's the device based search. Next we can try the user based search, which is our admin one. Our lab minutes admin one. And you can see it said currently is connected with a total of one and it's using permit all. Same thing, this is a based on the user. Same type of information. You can go to the endpoint that the user is currently on. Okay, peep authentication dot one X. The switch tells you the switch port. Also profiler it uh, identify the device as a VMware device. That's probably based on the OUI. You can see there's a lot of information that you can gather just based on the search results. So that's for the global search. Session trace, we just looked at it was part of the search result of the global search. So we're just going to skip over that. Next is the enhanced reports then alarm. So with 1.2, there's a lot more report added. So under operation, if you go reports, as you can see here, we have almost 30 reports that you can look at. And let's just pick one for now. Our most common one is probably radius authentication. So in the radius authentication, and you can just pick today, we'll run that. And if you're looking for certain things, you can also apply filter to it. 
So let's say we want to look for authentication from a user. So that would be identity and we'll filter by say admin one run. So you can see so far today, there's only one authentication coming from the user admin one, right? Although we're not going to go through all these reports, you see there's a deployment status just to give you an idea of what kind of information that you can gather from these reports. There's an endpoint, guest activity, client provisioning, mobile device management for MDM, so on and so forth, right? So moving on, next is the enhancement to live authentication page. So if you look at the, what this is talking about is authentication page right here, although this page by itself doesn't look that much different from the previous version. What's got added to this is the button right here. It says show live authentication or actually show live session. Let me switch back. Show live session right here. And this information used to be located under the active radius session in the reporting in the previous version. But now it's kind of good that they moved it to this or under the same authentication a live authentication page. So that way, when you click on that, you see another page and you can see all of the active radius session and active means that the ICE hasn't seen the radius accounting stop yet. So it will consider the session as being active and valid. What's kind of handy in my opinion on this page here is the COA action. And if you do a drop down, you can pretty much force a re-authentication. You can terminate the connection or session and then force the port to shut down. Or you can bounce the port as well. Okay, and all of those are based on COA. So let's see if we can try something here real quick. As you can see, currently we have four live session. Two of those are for the access point and the IP phone. This one right here is for our guests since it's map and the Windows 7. This one right here, since it has username AD1, we know that's our domain computer. Okay, so what we're gonna try here is to, let me make sure we refresh, and then we're gonna try to session termination and port shutdown. Okay, so you can see in the background here on the switch, the fast Ethernet 1019 has been changed, or has the state has been changed administratively down. Okay, and this is the result of the COA. And if we go back to the live authentication, you can see right here an entry without identity is usually referred to the COA or dynamic authorization. Right here, say succeeded. So if we click on that, see dynamic authorization succeeded, you scroll down right there, Cisco AV pair is a command to disable host port. Okay, so it's clearly a Cisco AV pair. And just to double check that the port is really down, you can show interface fast 1019. You can see the port is completely shut down. Okay, currently there isn't really a way for ICE to bring the port back up. So you still need to come in here and manually no shut the port to bring the port back up. Okay, so that's for the Live authentication, you can see as soon as you do that, it's been marked for both of the session as terminated since both of these VM lifts off the same port, port 19. And since we shut that port down, it also actually affects our second VM as well for our guests. And then after that, we got enhanced Cisco enhancement to Cisco NAC agent for the NAC agent for Windows and then the NAC agent for Mac OS. You can read through all this. And then for the external RESTful service for the API, which is not uh, too much of interest to us. Okay, there's also a few more things that's not included in this new feature list. And one of those change is the guest user identity stores. And I just want to show you that just to make uh, you realize or aware of the change. So if you go under the identity source sequences, before the guest user database is kind of included as part of the internal user. So let's pick the one that we have already right here. This is what we created back in IS-112 and it got upgraded. So right here, internal user, it used to include both the regular user that you manually create as well as the guest user that you create as part of the sponsor portal. With IS-1.2, the guest user database has been separated from the internal user. As you can see right here, it's a separate entry. And when you migrate it from 1.1 version, ICE will automatically include guest user if you have the internal user selected. That's what we saw right here. Okay, but you can now selectively remove or include those guest user database as part of your identity source sequences. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is something that you might really like or found very useful. And I'm glad this feature is here, which is the downloadable ACL checked. And you might run into the issue with the downloadable ACL where you have to type them all out. 
So here under downloadable ACL, let's pick one of these uh, internet only. So you might have run into the issue where you have a single typo in this whole ACLs and then wondering why your ACL doesn't get downloaded and applied by your switch. And just to later on discover that you have a typo in your ACL, now that problem is going to go away now with this check the ACL syntax. So you can hit on the link right here and it will basically parse through your ACL and make sure all of your configurations or syntax are valid. So right here, right now, it came back and said the ACL is valid. So obviously if you, let's say, intentionally put a typo right there and then do a recheck, they come back and say there's a problem at line seven, which is spot on. It even actually give you a little markers right here in line seven. And then it said your options are actually host, address groups, or any. So obviously it noticed that there is a invalid options or syntax as part of the ACL and it's warning you about it. So every time you do with the DACL, don't forget to hit this check DACL syntax to verify before you hit that button save. So as you can see that with ICE 1.2, there are only a few enhancements that got added with the highlight of the MDM integration support. But other than that, I would say that 80 to 90% of the web interfaces stays the same. And the configuration concept that you have learned from the ICE 1.1 still very much apply. Now that we have familiarized ourselves with ICE 1.2, we are ready to continue with our lab configuration. So that wraps up our video on ICE 1.2 new features. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmits.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.